And uh, the other thing I've just dug out here is uh, the screws we're going to be using to screw them in. So these are a self-tapping screw which tap into that uh, plastic nut that we've just installed into the frames. So uh, I'll go ahead and install these three servos now. Okay, so uh, here we have our front uh, cyclic servo installed uh, with the output shaft towards the rear of the frames. Uh, what you can see uh, through the hole here, and uh, the servo is actually on the other side of the frames, is the uh, rear cyclic servo. And again, the output shaft is towards the rear of the frames. And if I swap this over, so okay, and uh, there you can see the uh, front cyclic servo on the right hand side frame with the output shaft towards the rear and then the servo that we were looking at through the frames again with its output shaft towards the rear. Uh, and that's the cyclic servos mounted, of course we haven't got the uh, control horns on them yet, um, but uh, we can fit, we'll can we be fitting those next. Um, what I want to do uh, before that is uh, to put the uh, tail servo uh, up the back here uh, and also put the uh, gyro onto the uh, shelf here at the bottom. So uh, next thing is fitting the uh, tail servo uh, and then sticking the gyro on the shelf there. Okay, so uh, here we have uh, those items. We have the GP750 uh, gyro, which is supplied with the Super Pro. Uh, sorry, Super Combo. Um, we have the uh, pad for the gyro, which I'll stick onto the bottom of here, which will then stick that to that uh, rear gyro mount. And we have the uh, DS420 digital tail servo. So uh, first things first, I'll mount the gyro at the back of the machine, and then we can put the servo in. Okay, and there we have our uh, tail servo uh, installed. Uh, and what I've tried to do is I've put the output shaft of the servo towards the front because what I'm trying to do is to get this bracket as far back up the frames as I possibly can because if I, if I can possibly do it, I want to get this bracket absolutely tight up against the uh, back of the uh, tail boom clamp here. And the reason I want to do that is if I can get that tight on there, when I tighten this up, it's going to stop the boom from getting pulled in so it acts as an extra clamping mechanism uh, for the boom to stop it getting uh, pulled in um, by the uh, tension on the belt. So uh, that's the idea there. So uh, hopefully I can get this uh, tight up against there, maybe extend the push rod uh, slightly um, to achieve that. Um, but uh, there you go, that's the uh, tail servo uh, in place. Uh, and we're now in the position to start fitting uh, control horns uh, onto our various servos. Okay, and uh, here we have the control horns that come supplied in the kit. The three single arms go on the uh, cyclic servos and the uh, star horn is for the tail servo. Uh, similarly, you've got uh, metal screws here which hold the, uh, the single horns onto the metal geared servos. Um, and you need to put Loctite on these screws when you screw these on. Uh, and then for the DS420 tail servo, it's a plastic geared um, servo, so we have this self-tapping plastic screw uh, to hold the star horn on. Uh, and then of course we've got uh, our various balls which we need to install onto these horns. Uh, and that is in fact what I'm going to do next, is to put the balls onto the horns uh, and then we can uh, install them onto the machine. Okay, so uh, here we have the horns made up. The manual shows uh, the balls for the cyclic servos being on the outer hull uh, and for the tail servo being in the uh, middle hull. So that's where I've installed them according to the manual. Uh, and I'm now just going to uh, centre up my servos using a servo tester uh, and install these um, various uh, horns onto their respective servos. Uh, and then uh, we're in a position to start making up the push rods which will uh, need to go on the cyclic servos uh, up to the swash plate. Okay, I've just dropped these two front cyclic um, arms back off the machine because having fitted them 
uh, the lineup of the ball is not very good and in fact uh, the ball needs to be swapped uh, and put onto the uh, rear of the arm with the nut on the front and in fact closer inspection of the manual um, does show that um, it's just a little bit difficult to see. So uh, I'm just going to swap these two balls over for the front two cyclic servos. For the rear servo, the ball being on the front like this is fine, um, but uh, for the front servos it needs to be the other side. Okay, so here we see the left hand uh, front cyclic servo, see the ball installed on the inside. Um, and if I show you through the frames here, you can see the uh, rear cyclic servo with the ball on the front of the arm. And if I switch over to the other side, you can see the uh, opposite side cyclic servo. Uh, and again, the ball on the uh, inside. And then towards the rear, you can see our tail servo um, with the push rod. Uh, in place. Okay, so uh, the last thing uh, we need to do now is to make the uh, push rods that go up to the uh, swash plate for the three, three front uh, cyclic servos. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dig those out and we can have a look at those. Okay, so uh, here we have our three push rods for the cyclic servos, uh, and according to the manual, the smallest one of these. Uh, needs a 10 millimeter gap in the middle here. The next one up uh, has a 17 millimeter gap in the middle here, and the next one up has a 21.5 millimeter gap in the middle here. So uh, I'm going to uh, have a go at uh, looking at the lengths that we've got here um, and uh, just check that they're correct, and I'll come back. OK, so I've adjusted those down to be the right lengths according to the manual uh, and those can now be fitted onto the machine. OK, so here you see the push rods fitted. Uh, front cyclic servo here, the uh, rear cyclic servo, and if I switch around to the other side of the machine, and then we can see uh, the other front cyclic servo push rod. Uh, and these are reasonably well aligned. Um, on this outer hole. Um, I'm not sure it would be uh, any better if I came in one hole uh, on, the, on the servo here. Um, it's reasonably vertical, it might be slightly better on that inner hole, uh, but for the moment I'm going to leave it where it is. Um, so uh, the only remaining thing left to do really is to uh, fit the speed controller onto the uh, machine. Uh, here we have our uh, speed controller and uh, that's got to go on uh, somewhere. I, I normally fit these on the side so uh, it may uh, end up going down the uh, down on the side down here somewhere uh, and uh, of course we've got to put a receiver into the machine um, but aside from that we're, uh, we're pretty much done obviously we've got some uh, routing of wires to do and, uh, and the setup of the machine um, but from a build perspective um, we're pretty much there Okay, so here we have our uh, fully wired T Rex 450 Sport Super Combo. Uh, tail servo at the back here, and the wire goes around and into the uh, into the gyro. Uh, let's try to spin this around so you can see. Basically, plugs into the gyro in here. Uh, we've got our gyro uh, on the back shelf. You can see here, and we can get at the button for the programming for that. Uh, the receiver is a um, AR6100, that's just a single uh, without a satellite receiver, just a single spectrum receiver without a satellite uh, and that's right up the front here uh, and then you can probably see if I turn it like this the wires I've routed you know, from here down through a little hole in the radio tray here down through there uh, and then into the receiver and then if I uh, spin this around like so, you can see uh, the speaker trouble on the side here. 
I haven't uh, fitted a Dean's connector to the uh, speed controller just yet, um, but I've got the wiring from the uh, gyro and uh, the speed controller coming around uh, here and into uh, the front of the receiver. Uh, I've put some padding on the frames here just so that these wires don't chap against the frames. Uh, and similarly up here where we go around the bend of the frame here I've put some uh, plastic protection on the wire to this rear cyclic servo uh, so that doesn't get uh, chaffed or uh, cut by a vibration of the wire against the frame. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. The only other things that I've done um, that I hadn't done before was uh, right down the back here I've uh, put the uh, little tie wraps through the uh, pushrod supports here uh, which hold those in place so they can't move. In the kit there's black ones of these but uh, in order to make it visible on camera I've used these blue ones just so you can see one at the back here as well. So for the, both the supports one I've put just behind the horizontal stabiliser uh, and then the other one is kind of halfway between the servo at the front here uh, and the uh, the rear push rod support here just to make sure that push rod is, is as supported as it can be uh, and can't bend um, on its travel down to the uh, tail rotor uh, right down at the back here. So um, that's pretty much it, that's all the wiring done um, all I've got to do now is uh, get a Dean's connector on here uh, and we can fire up and uh, do the setup and uh, take the model for its first test flight. So uh, that's the end of the uh, build video. Um, I hope it's been useful and um, hopefully I'll be able to produce uh, some flight videos in the next few days and uh, put those into the review that will go on to heavytuning.com along with the build videos. Okay. So uh, that's everything and uh, I'll see you next time.